Jay Lehu Baba, continuing with Stay with God, a statement in Illusion and Reality by Francis Bravazan. We are now on Book 5, uh, which is The God Man as World Axis and Living Perfection of Art. The divine sun of reality shining through the mists of illusion. And we are now on part two. Jay Baba. The seasons are slow for men, but swift for God. Drought drag of flesh chains and spirit, wings of Zeus's eagle, motionless in the Empyrean, illustrated by the story of the disciples sent to fetch water from the river. There he met a woman, forgot about water, married her, acquired much money, acquired children, lost a lot, the lot and her set out again upon the pilgrim road and came to his guru's door, freshly suppliant. Twelve years in his time had passed. Half an hour is a long time to spend getting a bucket of water and not bring it back, the guru commented. Drought drag of flesh chains while above Manasarawa, by eternal Kailas, circles the divine swan without movement in mirror gazing. Two. Nothing ever happens. Happening is dreaming. For instance, as Meher Baba said one day during the Sahavas, Here you are all sitting in this hall thinking that your being here is real. But I assure you, you are only dreaming it. Say, tonight, when you go to sleep, you are dreaming that you are sitting here. And someone comes in your dream and tells you you are only dreaming. You will reply, I am not dreaming. I am actually experiencing sitting here listening to Baba's discourse with all the others around me. But in the morning you will awake and remember it as a dream. So I tell you that one day you will really awaken and know for certain that everything you have done was only a dreaming. I am the Ancient One. So is each one of you. But whereas I have awakened, you are still held in your dreams. Three. Mohammed said, It is incumbent upon every believer to acquire knowledge. How much and of what? According to Ali born Uthman al-Jalabi al-Hujwiri, Sufficient of the world to earn one's living and support a family. Knowledge is immense and life is short. Time is precious. Don't fritter it away picking up bits of information about this and that. Use it to find truth. Anas born Malik said, The wise aspire to know the foolish to relate. Muhammad said, the devotee without divinity is like a donkey turning a mill. Hatim al-Assam said, I have chosen four things to know. The rest 
have discarded. That my daily bread is a portion to me, so I don't strive to augment it. That I owe God a debt which no one else can pay. That one debt pursues me. And I have prepared myself against the day when he catches up with me. That God is observing me. And I am ashamed to do what I ought not. Four. Sufficient knowledge of the world to earn a living and buy three books. The Bible. At this time it is called God Speaks. A book of the lives of saints. A book of living verse. To buy a musical instrument and the price of some lessons from a master of it. Sufficient knowledge of who and what one is in order to live as a human being amidst people, in order not to be wholly a user and a hypocrite, in order to begin to long for other than what one is, i.e. self or God. Sufficient knowledge of the states of God, see God speaks, in order to appreciate the absolute necessity of a master, and enough wit to find him, and enough gumption to obey him implicitly once one has found him. All extra knowledges are toggles before your ass's nose to keep you plodding up the never-ending dusty road. So that Aphrodite of one shall not go on for the rest of one's life, making a damn fool of herself bed romping with Ares the blusterer. A divine Jesus was tougher than Mohammed and his commentators, or than Master Kung, and said that there is only one thing you need know, and that is. I am the way, and you haven't got Buckley's chance of getting to God except through me. So you'd better leave your poor old mother and father and kid sister and your oil and steel empires and tag along. And as Gizzer said to Moses, don't ask no fool questions of me because I'm a busy man. But just be handy in case I get the whim to give you a whack over the head and let some daylight into your thick skull, stone head, or in my utter kindness, plunge you into terrible remorse as I did my beloved Peter. Six. Books. Books. A weariness to the flesh, as Solomon said. Dead meat, riddled with maggots by the time they're off the press. And unless one has the transforming breath of a Jesus, but then one don't need them. Excellent guys until you find the way, said Abu Sayyid after he had buried his. A book is a book when it contains the name of God. There have been 84,000 prophets. And each one left a book, and each book contained one word, God, said Abu to the young seeker. God speaks as a book of a book, the book of this age, written by God, to appease the intellectual convulsions of the mind of men, who, as its author states, to understand the infinite, Eternal reality is not the goal of individualized beings in the illusion of creation. Reality is to be realized by conscious experience. Seven. God speaks is also the first time 
God has used the English language to tell us something he wanted to tell us. Almost like he had got tired of Sanskrit or Greek or Arabic or Hebrew and had the idea he would learn a new language, the lingo of the majority of the most dumb, of the most, most gross conscious of human beings that ever were upon the face of the earth who have forgotten about him the most longest and most consistently and who never remember that they read because, as Kumaraswamy, A.K., pointed out, the spread of literacy is the decline of culture. We can all read, but what do we read? Someone's killed someone or would like to. Someone's seen something which we haven't and thinks we should know. Eight. Someone's invented a new gadget or a new form of budget or a different smelling soap or a new cereal or the improved scope of a radio aerial or the odds of horses or some social behavior courses or the other various kinds of anusial belching that keeps our feet squelching in veil of mud across heart word and response and the soul dancing a jig or a rock and roll nuzzling a carrot suspended from the point of a bayonet nine English, a developed language. Milton, we are told, made it resonate. But why did he have to stand on his head to do it? Milton blind and Homer all seeing. No one seems to have mentioned that resonance is a quality of the heart. When Vivekananda got up in Chicago when Millie pronounced the word brothers. Half the assembly got up on their hind legs and cheered. Vivek knew the blank paper scriptures by heart. In fact, his heart was painted with whiteness his heart encompassed brotherhood. Brother was he in true sonship of his guru. So when the particular of this general light condition occurred on his tongue and he said, Brothers, the resonance reverberated in the souls of his audience and their souls remembered their natural posture of verticality and they stood up. No doubt, as Shankaracharya pointed out, all songs are to Brahmin, God. So it could be asserted that all expression is art. But some songs are the long way round, the round of the rounds of a few million, perhaps more births, and some are a direct flight to the heart of God. Just as all men are drunk, some with the world, some with love for God, which is just the difference between your cage crooner and mud painter and violent poet and a mirabai, a sappho or chatibaba. Gönika is parochial. Siwa Bairao at Kailas, universal. Gönika, the rage of a man against conditions imposed by others. Kailas, the destruction of self-imposed obstacles to self.
Guernica, an expression of barbarism destroying itself. Kailas, the expression of civilization continually renewing itself. Guernica is reflection. Kailas is a statement. Eleven. Art is an act of love. An imperishable statement, cut in stone, uttered in tones and words or through the movements of the dancer, and thus impressioned in the material of mind, continually contemporary and continuously accessible to one who loves, as act self-sufficient, useless for thy works of progress, O man, as statement Revealment of the beauty of God and proof of his eternal existence. When David or Tukuram danced with God, a harmony of movement was impressed on the minds of people who didn't even see the dance. When Solomon or Namdev sang, music was entering into people's lives. When Enoch walked with God, walking was again beautiful. When the friends of God talked with him, speech became lovely. When Muhammad offered his five prayers, the hearts of men listened and inclined towards prayer. Twelve. The sun is every day renewing the world of nature and men. Even though you shut yourself in a room, sun is in the food you eat and in the fire or radiator by which you try to melt your bones. Avatar is every day renewing men's hearts even though they encase them in concrete and steel. If anyone denied the existence of the sun, he would be thought crazy. Yet denial of the one who sustains the heart, motivator of thought and organ of insight, is considered normal and scientific. Science which rejects reasoning is divorced from science. Art which takes no account of intuition has become separated from art. Come. An end to equivocation and mud puddling and accepting the advice of Canute's counselors. You have not yet harnessed the ocean or God's breath, not even yet measured the spots on the physical sun. Thirteen. And on the one hand, you have Ezra bound with knowledge of many languages, confused and disappointed because all of truth cannot be contained in any one language. And on the other, Bula Shah with the powers of God arising out of mastery of a single letter. On one hand, Basudev confusing the issue with learned commentary. And on the other, divine Chaitanya, scholar also, using the texts as a runway to take his listeners towards truth. Words, words, but the name of God. Given to the eager and pure disciple by the precious Guru, is the key which unlocks the doors of words shut fast on the printed page. The name is the living breath of truth which blows where so it will and can unlock even the doors of hearts.
14. Because, Mr. Pound, you don't need ten languages to say it. Any one babble tongue will do so long as one has thoroughly learned the word turning and has turned, repented, and is facing in the direction and has said, give, give me a word by which I may know words. Aha! This is the very and entirely bones and soul of the matter of poetry. The turning and unlearning and returning and the mind cheerful and high-hoped and open, dwelling upon the heart's tone, which is the voice of the word in a man, which was how Valmiki received the Ramayana. And Homer said, Tell me, O Virgin of God, thou pure brightness, tell me the words of my speaking, for of ourselves we hear only rumors and know nothing. And thus, Every poet is an answer to his own prayer. Fifteen. And Tukaram, after he was schooled in daily conversation with Krishna, starts writing verses at Krishna's behest for God loves poets who can rightly sing his praises. The poet is a swift arrow of light in the darkness at fat necks supporting pin-headed thinking. Unless your neck becomes as thin as a hair. An idle, glorious one, bane of progress of production lines and bitter men, boiled with the sweat of breath which should be savored, sacrificed to God. I labor my point. Certainly, labors are little hammers, and hammers, hand or jack, is the only way of breaking stone. Not that Baba won't do it with a single word, but if we had already lost our ears in fine poetry and our eyes in love glancing, we would have some accommodation for Baba's word of breaking. Sixteen. But this is not a denial of learning. A man of learning and whose heart is open can bring others to his own station, whereas a man of heart alone enjoys sight of God but helps no one. But a man with learning, the gate of whose heart is shut, so that God has not come into it and reshapen it, and well pleased taken his seat there and receives the man's love. A man in whom the vivifying breath of a Jesus or Tilopa has not moved, is a designer in wind-blown sand, a winnower of straw chaff. He calls that which is passing real and asserts that the real is false, a destroyer of culture and betrayer of lovely art, a bubble-mouthed man, bubble slobber of hail on the green shoots of young intellect. Seventeen. On the other hand, the man unspeakably glorious, and on the other, the woman unnameably beautiful. Sometimes, a disciple said, when I repeat the name and feel the qualities of the moon, I become the moon and experience bliss. Sometimes when I repeat the name, I feel the qualities of the sun. I become the sun and overpowered, fall senseless to the ground. Moon gleam and sun beat. Artemis's gentle arrows and the rivers and words of enchantment. The 
the sun god's brazen arrows wounding the mouth of the parched earth and it's still calling how long is the path to god's feet rain rain the healing of gentle rain Eighteen, a human being, a divine man, taking who as of God and deriving man from manas, mind. A human being, that final vehicle, which spirit molded with care and loving eagerness and informed, which the angels were commanded by God to worship, but which Iblis hated, and ever since have the devil's descendants hated it and conditioned it and twisted it to serve their purposes. A human being labored towards, through the endless ages of evolution, a man and a woman, blueprinted in paradise, Eden, fitted together precisely and realized in actuality after the exile and immeasurable wanderings in the perfect saints, but perfected completely in the men God, the perfect masters, and in the God man, Autar. Nineteen. A human being. That's an interesting word. It's got to do with a man acting something like God. Some don't. Must be something to do with evolution. People don't get rid of it all. That's why you get some acting as mean as a snake or as cunning as a dingo or as randy as a bull. I knew a man once couldn't look at any woman without wanting to go at her. But I saw one woman handle him, just looked at him, and he changed color and gave a kind of a snort like a bull what was suffocating and made off. I said to her, that's a pretty powerful sort of a look, miss. Yes, she said. I call it my mirror look. They get their horns tangled up in it and don't like what they look like. As with most popular notions, the notion that travel is broadening, the reverse is true, because it ties ever more tightly the knots in the net of the senses. It causes one to see many things and remember few, to make many acquaintances and few friends. It leads the imagination onto tomorrow and prevents mind dwelling on the moment of today. It scatters affection and prevents love from manifesting. It makes meditation difficult and prayer impossible. The ideal man is one who has never been beyond the boundaries of his own district, who, except when he must eat, or to visit his friend, hardly leaves his house, who welcomes the world as a visitor, and after a little while conducts it courteously to the door. The very ideal man is a bula shah, unlettered save for one letter, unminded save for one object before his mind's eye. Twenty-one, and the problem of children, because we have despised the saints and ridiculed the ways of art and heeded not the successive word of brightness, when words no longer have value, when a man's word is given lightly 
and love is barter, and art dressed in whoredom and mocked, and the eye does not look straightly, and the mouth drops filth, and convulses before the gentle word, brother, and the ear is denied solitary listening, and is sold into whoredom for lust of advertising and propaganda. The children have no one to whom they can turn, no one whom they can trust, Secureless, homeless, and parentless, and wandering they become. Twenty-two. And it is that the undisciplined parent, the parent who loves not pupilship, says to the child, Don't! And in the word, Don't! child hears, continue in what you are doing, because in the undisciplined parent's word is the injunction to ignore it. And it is that the undisciplined government comprising men who love not learning and have not acquainted themselves with the divine truths, nor sought to model themselves in the image of art, it is that when they make a law Containing that law is the command to break it. And it is that because of these things, this age is an avataric age, a time when we, man, have sunk to a low level of living and being. When the limit of the violation of the divine in man and the human of God has been reached, and only by the fully and perfect descent of himself as a man, can he re-establish the way of virtue, the way of pupilship and love and delight in humanness, in men? Twenty-three. Little streams run towards big streams and the rivers lose themselves into the ocean. But the streamlets of God, the little children, have no one to bear them to the divine ocean of their origin. They spill over on bitumen and concrete in small escaped floods. Ghost talk in schoolrooms, male voice, female voice, talking ghost talk. What will we tell the little children? Tell them about animals that frisk on the earth. There are pictures of them in the picture books, ghost pictures. Little lamb, little lamb, lamb chops for breakfast too. Outside sun in the sky, get up teacher and organize some games they have forgotten play way. You must show them how. Bring them inside again. Let the lady voice and the gentleman voice tell them about Red Indians or Aborigines. No stories of King Arthur or King Ram and valor and gentleness and courtesy. No poems of desperate lovers. No little preludes of John Sebastian Bach. Jesus, if only someone would make some nice music. Music ought to start somewhere within a man's heart and come out and surprise him with a sort of delight, like rain after a long dry spell, or like a bloody lovely moon coming up out of the ocean. It ought to make a man feel like shouting like those chaps did when the morning stars sang together. Morning stars. That's poetry. Jesus, if only some chap would write a bit of poetry or some, or some music which would sound like that, so that the living Christ himself would nod his head in approval. Jesus, I bet even the bloody cows would dance and the bloody dingoes nibble grass alongside the sheep. Even men might stop cutting little lambs' throats and eating them. If only someone 
made some real good music. Music as lovely as God. Twenty-five. Christ of a calculation for a scientist. That purely by mathematics he had judged this an avataric period. And that Lord Baba had come again into the world in the exact place where he could be found. Christ of a theme for a fugue in twelve parts. The disciples and their heavenly course around him. Their service and adoration. But it seems that shepherds once had more news than intellectuals have now. The world is a vaudeville show. Item. Demonstration of the exact effect of radiation on human tissue. Item. Demonstration of how exactly a satellite world will be able to control the earth. Item. Demonstration of the reaction of a monkey's nerves to our most recent music. J. Meher Baba. Continuing with Stay With God, a statement in Illusion on Reality by Francis Brabazon. We are up to uh, book five and uh, about midway through part two. J. Baba. Six. Ideogram. Draw a circle equals all, equals also sun, equals concentration of divine light. Pull yourself together, old man, equals avatar who shines equally on saint and sinner, and from whom came the sun and stars and air and fire and water and the lovely earth life of all things, in the earth, and of men and women, the awakener, the lovely one. Draw five lines coming out of the circle, one up, one each side, two down, and you have a man, evolution's end and possibility of self-knowing. Draw lines radially equals real equals bondage and rebirth sun beside wheel equal man found by a perfect master equal involution equal taking the path back to God draw a part any sort of part Equal any sort of man or woman with heart. Put two wheels to it. Equals heart moving in balance. A well-wrought vase instead of any old pot. Equal a mature man or woman. Attach wings to it. Equal a saint. Wings and a spout. Equal flying and pouring. Equal a perfect saint, one who is with God and helps people. Twenty-seven. Men of God, artists and defenders of lovely art, Paul, the real Paul, in Jesus' footsteps, First to deny the world and flee to the desert. But when Anthony visited him after sixty or seventy years, inquired compassionately, Are men still building cities? Paul, for whose body lions dug the grave. And Bemis the gentle, whom the desert beasts frisked around when he walked abroad at night, and he would draw water from a well and give them cups of it. And Theon, 
who kept silence for thirty years and in whose eyes an angel stood and fruit who when a child mocked him called the child to him and gave him a gold ring and kind advice so that the child said thy manliness I will bear in mind all my life and Kari the sudden who never thought twice about dealing a blow, even in a strange earl's house and all the earl's battle men at table, entrusted his life to the manhood of his enemy, Flossi. and Macarius who was a lover beyond all others to whom God returned the grapes after their going the entire round of the desert and Hypericus who said better to eat flesh and drink wine than eat your brother's flesh by backbiting and Achilles if thou wouldst sub broth Go down into Egypt. And Milarepa, if you want condiments, put a few more nettles. And Paphnutius, to whom God showed his equal in a street singer who had been a robber and who at Paphnutius' word threw away his pipes and used his skill in music to bring his mind and heart into harmony. And Isidore, at peace with his wife and an angel guiding the team while he conversed with God. And Flossi, whose rotten ship was seaworthy enough for an old man ready to die. And Najar, lawman and man of love, who slew none but accepted his own slaying. Berg Thora, his wife, who met death bravely with him. Twenty-nine. Light, light, blue subdued the floods. Ram threw a bridge across them. Noah outrode them. Light, light, light on grass and leaf. Petal light of pink and white in the spring. Fruit light of early summer and summer. Snow light. About the feet of Taishan or Meru. Moses' woolen shirt, according to Al Junaid, Telemachus' woolen shirt, Malarepa's shirt of woven angel's breath, light, flood of the mind, and dress of the soul, the movement of which in a man through his hands or speech is called art. The golden age, time of the reign of virtue, is in perpetuity. As Banuda showed the false worshipping king in respect to Pandarpur, and paradise is merely the passing landscape of nothingness in the mirrors of the perfect masters. And paradise is merely the passing landscape of nothingness in the mirrors of the perfect masters. Thirty. Unless a man takes his stand against the world of dying civilization, 
unless a man takes his stand against the world of a dying civilization, unless he stops discriminating the patterns of shadow and turns his face to the son of the living God, he, sh he shall in no wise grow his life into a harvest against his old age and for others. He shall in no wise become a singer of lovely song, a devotee praiser of avatar's deeds, nor shall Sophia with bangled arms and smiling sweetly come to him and kiss his mouth into awakening. Unless a man sits down and stops fattening his guts, guts, a convenient symbol of the gross plane, he shall in no wise avoid ruinous belly fat poverty. Unless a man sits down and determines the tone and color of his heart, he shall never be able to obey the seasons nor himself. Unless and takes thought within his heart, he shall in no wise increase his stature and again become a little child. Thirty-one. Shave your head and pour dust upon it and wait until he calls. For any other mirror but him will deceive you and keep you as plodding up the dusty road. Sit down like a plant and wait his sun, for all other suns rise only to set. The lover waits for the night, for only then does beauty become visible, and his ardor is decorated with kisses. To him, day is night because its light leads into darkness, whereas night is day because therein shines his true love. It is because the lover is immature that the beloved draws a veil of beauty over the face of his truth. It is because of this veil that anguished idleness begins. For when the lover sees Layla's face in the roadside dust, the beloved weeps one tear in which the lover is drowned, smiles one smile which becomes the lover's illumination. Once men burnt the flesh of their flesh upon altars, and God was savor or not of the sacrifice, and the rain fell or didn't, and the remaining flesh was lit or remained opaque. And the devotee took the sun path to immortal self, or the moon path to another birth, wrought their lives in likeness of God's creativeness, told stories in stone and words of Avatar's lives, his acts of compassion and loveliness, so that wherever people looked, they saw images of God. Then men started telling stories about men, and characterization and situation took the place of the attributes and deeds of God. The field of light, the battlefields of the soul, Kurukshetra, became the wars men fought for some woman or a strip of earth. O oh, Helen, thou lovely one, hiding truth in your bright curls.
33. Worshippers of Aries we became, ring barkers of forest silences of Buddha, obliterators of the pilgrim root of Jesus, defiling the lovely head of God in the dust. Dante, even confining his friends and prophets in his own mind hell. By God, you would think any fool would know that the characters in the Old Testament and Iliad were the heroes of God overcoming the forces of the plains of him, intent on love and glorious sacrifice and the path conquerors. But we had been listening to Paul without angel's tongue railer and tinkling timpanists surrounding the lovely theme of Jesus with arpeggios of disorder. We had imported works of decadent Greeks and paunchy Romans and invented literature and harnessed our space poets of science into making kitchen gadgets and guns and exploiting petroleum potential. Brought our divine mind down from azure flight, kicked out the saint in us and banished the saints to Arabia and Persia and Japan and India and began wave beating and foot slogging over the face of the earth with our backsides up and our noses along the ground, trying to pick up the musk scent of truth of our own navel and began bubble-whizzing, breakfast in Paris, lunch in Greenland, dinner and dancing on the terrace under the northern lights. Temples to Aris in New York and Moscow, dress and art fashions. From Paris, a new pantheon of gods and goddesses in a place called Hollywood. Elga in England and the church, saving souls of brothel inmates and taking rent from them. USA, big brother aid to the whole world, using a thousand steel-helmeted troops to subdue a township and coming second in satellite race. And the five perfect masters quietly cognizing the world of gangrenous limbs and squint-eyedness, walled city world overlooking, spent foam desert of accomplishment, and saying among themselves, it is time to bring him down again the avatar of God, for another spell of world truing and course setting. And because his lovers cannot much longer breathe with any degree of comfort, so they brought him who was called Manu and Noah and Zarathustra and Siva and Ram and Krishna and Buddha and Jesus and Muhammad down and gave him birth and watched over him with their mother tenderness and their father solicitude and brought him, the ancient one and the newest one, again to his God madness and handed over to him the seal and the key and themselves returned to the ineffable mountain of retirement. And he knew those who were to be his disciples. And he called them to him in love and service, in gentleness, 
and warriorship for that war which men ape in their little wars, and took them out on the roads, breathing his own lovely name on the breath of their utterance with each step, wiping away from their faces with his mother hand the sweat and dust of the world, and as father exampling them and inuring them through the trials and hardships of manhood, and set out with them to the haunts of his lovers, the musts and saints, in jungles and mountain fastnesses, and by roadsides and in cities, and embraced them and fed them and sent them on to the next stage of their journey, and fed the poor and bowed his head down to their feet, himself being the poorest among them, and even visited the West where lived the most poor of his poor. Thirty-seven. And allowed his body to be broken and the pain of the world to be centered in his pain. And has done no miracles except the miracle of love. Raised no dead but urged us to die to ourselves, given no sight to the blind, but helped us become blind to illusion. I tell you with my divine authority that they belittle Jesus, who attribute his greatness to mere miracles which any fourth planer still wrapped in illusion himself can perform. manifested unlimitedness and limitation, established divinity in the midst of barbarism, wrote lovely art, loved pure act again upon earth, raised once again the banner ablaze with gathered brightness of love God, that men again shall joy in the works of their hands, and in love, and remember that they are the sons of God and God. Thirty-eight. Thus, and thus it will ever be, the one as Jesus raising again the banner of Moses draggled in the wind. And those who really loved Moses fled to his feet as Jesus and folded their hands before him and cast down their hearts before his again brightness. And the one, as Muhammad, raising again the banner of Jesus bleached by willful interpretation, And those who love Jesus with somewhat of the love with which he should be loved flock to him exalting in God's mercy and towardsness. And the one as Baba and those who are of the law and the love and the humanity are dancing with new joy and casting themselves in surrenderance and measured abandon into his fire of melting and remolding, nearer to soul's vision of true heart shape. Thus it will ever be the cry of the dawn and the weeping before the risen sun. because you are love which is existence which is knowledge which is bliss 
you always gave out the heart doctrine, love me, love me. But you have found it necessary also to take up swords and whips. You have accepted thorns and arrows and crucifixions. You have rolled many heads in the dust and stripped many of their all except God. Therefore you are known by some as the Lamb and by others as the Lion. To some you are fullness and to some emptiness. To some the treasure keeper and bestower. To some the only poor one and great beggar. You beg a morsel of our love, O oh God, and you give us divine self. Art is an act of love, the shock whereby the soul awakens to awareness of itself and understands that the world is the shadow of the real, that everything is passing except his face, that all experience has but one purpose and end to cause one to renounce the world as an empty dream. Art is an act of love, the cry of the devotee as a sword, in his heart cutting an accommodation in which the sun of majesty and loveliness may rise, and the furnace of tears, and the smokeless fire of secret sighs, and the blood turning to milk and death in eternal existence. Art is the loveliness of God embodied in a man. God is that man in his lovely acts to men. Jai Meher Baba, continuing with Stay with God, the statement in Illusion and Reality by Francis Brabazon. Mm -hmm.